Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Samson. Would you please tell me your full name? Of course. My name is Maria Papali. And can I see your identification, please? Thank you. That's wonderful. Okay. Now, in the first part of the exam, I will ask you some personal questions. First, I'd like to ask you about your hometown. What kind of place is your hometown? Well, my hometown is Nicosia, which is the capital of Cyprus, and it's the biggest city on the island. Great. And uh, tell me about the most interesting place in your hometown. Mm, I would say the most interesting place is the park that we have called Athalassa Park. And it's very big. It has two lakes and many trees and also has a cycling line. And uh, what changes would you like to make to your hometown? The one thing that bothers me in Nicosia is that it's really crowded because it's the capital of the city and there are many people and there is also traffic morning and every evening. So what I would change is um, expand maybe the city so, uh, reduce that, so that I would reduce the traffic. Right, okay. That's... Now let's move on to talk about animals. What kinds of animals are popular pets in your country and why? Okay, so the most popular animal is dog because uh, here in Cyprus we are really uh, dog people, yeah. dogs, and also uh, we love cats because here in Cyprus we have many cats and also strays and people feed them, so it's kind of pet for them. All right, and how are animals in your country used for work? Um, we have cows and horses that uh, in the villages, they use them to carry stuff uh, instead of cars, but we also use them, we use sheep and cows again, uh, for milk industries. All right, and are there any animals in your country that have special significance? Mm, uh, the animal that stands out, I would say, is the cat because there is also a story uh, for our country that uh, Saint Eleni brought cats in the island because there were a lot of snakes, lots of snakes and uh, she brought the cats in order to reduce the snakes and people stop have problems. So now there is um, a big amount, a big number of cats in the island and it's uh, like a symbol for the island. Oh, that's good. Now let's uh, talk about travel. How easy is it to travel in your country? Okay, um, so inland, the most popular uh, mean of transportation is by car, but we also have buses and bicycles. But uh, if you want to travel to another country or from another country to come here in Cyprus, uh, the most uh, popular would be the uh, airplane, but there are also some um, boats. Right. And what form of transport is the most popular and why? Um, if you are traveling inland, as I mentioned before, is the car because it is the easiest and also the buses are not, they do not have a very uh, good schedule timetable. So people don't use uh, buses. But um, if you are going to travel abroad, then uh, people prefer airplane because are fastest and also cheaper. And are there any parts of your country that are difficult to travel to? Why? Why not? Um, I wouldn't say that there are parts of the country that are difficult because it is a small island and we have um, accessible roads to any place and you can go if you own a car you can go anywhere you want but there if you don't have a car and you travel by bus 
Uh, obviously, you can't go anywhere because uh, there are specific places that uh, the buses are scheduled to go. Great. Thank you very much. That's uh, the end of this part of the test. So we'll now move on to the next part. So in this part, I'm going to give you a topic and I'd like you to talk about it for up to two minutes. Now, before you talk, you'll have one minute to think about what you're going to say and you can make notes if you wish. Do you understand? Yes. Okay, uh, you may start speaking. Go ahead. Okay, so one of the many environmental problems that my country faces is the reduction of some species of birds because uh, people are love to hunt here in Cyprus and uh, they overdo it and they kill many more animals that they supposed to, even though there is a law um, that uh, that says um, there is only a specific amount of birds that you can have and on specific days. And well, the negative impact of this problem is that now with the reduction of these uh, birds, other species, other animals, they have also a problem that they feed from birds. For example, some um, some kind of wolves, they like to feed uh, these kind of birds. And now with the reduction of these birds, they have a problem because they don't have they don't have a lot of food to eat. And uh, so what my the government of my country decided to do is to reinforce the law and uh, they did they raised the amount of money that you will pay if you go if you go hunting whenever you are not allowed it and they also made seasons uh, where, where the birds are multiplying on these seasons, it is not allowed to go for hunting. And this, uh, this has uh, showed that it has good effect, but uh, we, we, are, we need a long way in order to, to reach the state where we were. Okay. The Thank you okay. very much. Two minutes up. Okay. So on this next part, we've been talking about an environmental problem 
in your country, and now I'd like to ask you some questions related to this. First, let's consider global environmental problems. So tell me about some of the environmental problems that are affecting countries these days. Uh, the most talked problem would be the climate change. And it is, it is happening because uh, of the global warming and the amount of uh, pollutants, that, pollutants that we expose to the environment. And also a very serious problem is the deforestation that people cut off trees in order to build cities or um, industries. And do you think that governments around the world are doing enough to tackle these problems? That's a really good question, but I believe that uh, not all countries are, protect, are trying to protect the environment. Well, especially in the last decade, I have seen many countries and, and organizations to come to, that they come together and try to do something that is best for the environment so they can help planet Earth, but also enhance um, the, the lives of the humans. Uh, for example, they Pro, they try to provide car, electric cars, not cars, not cars that need um, gas, or they try to find uh, alternative ways of energies. And many ways, they also promote bicycle instead of using a car. So many countries are trying to protect the environment. Right, and why do some people not consider environmental problems to be serious? Um, well, on, on, the one, on, on the one hand, I think that they do know that this is a serious problem, but for, maybe for a reason, for example, financial reasons, they do not want to accept that the, um, hurting the environment is a serious problem. But on the other hand, I believe that also education uh, has a really important role here. For example, if you do not teach uh, the communities, the children from a young age, that um, how we can uh, cause harm to the environment and what we need to do to, in order to protect the environment, then the, we will have a community that does not believe that uh, should, we should care about the environment at all because they do not know what the hazards are. Right. And OK, we'll now look at environmental problems and disasters caused by humans now that we're talking about this. So what do you consider to be the world's worst environmental disaster caused by humans? Mm. Uh, there are many problems, but uh, the most uh, serious environmental problem would be the climate change that is causing ice to melt. And this has some serious problem. For example, one problem that I can think of right now is that when the ice are, are melting, they will be some, mi ma some uh, microorganisms will be revealed that they may be harmful to the human body. And this will call new diseases and maybe lead to pandemic. Right. And why do you think environmental disasters are caused by humans? Why do you think they happen? Um, because humans produce, produce um, things that nature will never produce by itself, or it will never produce in such a big amount, in these great, great amounts that uh, human interactions produce. For example, carbon dioxide is part of a natural uh, cycle of the environment, but um, with human interactions, we produce uh, way more, uh, way more uh, load of uh, carbon dioxide than the environment can absorb. So it is causing a real problem. Right. Okay. Thank you very much. That's the end of the test. Okay. So you can take a deep breath now <laughs> and relax. <laughs> 
it's uh, so over this time. And uh, okay, I'm just going to uh, add up your uh, score, your band. Yeah. So we'll have a look at that, and then we'll go through the the other parts. We'll see how you did. So oh. just give me a second there. Be right with you. Yes. Okay, so uh, are you ready for this, Maria? <laughs> How did you think you did with your score? Um, I don't know. I was um, nervous. You were nervous. Yeah. Uh, thought you uh, thought you handled it pretty well. I mean, it was you was you were talking quite you know assertively, which which really does help. Uh, okay, let's have a look at your your score here. So you know, I think we're we're looking at just about we're looking at a seven here i mean uh, you we're looking at a seven um but that can be you can easily increase that i mean like you said maybe it was your your nerves that were acting up on you a little bit you can increase that to a to an eight you can increase your band score by one in my opinion and uh, obviously a seven is it's, it's not it's, it's good it's, it's really good we'll, we'll have a look through and you know see how you did what sort of score are you hoping to get uh, in the real test? Um, anything above uh, six and a half. Anything above six and a half. Oh, there you go. You're, I mean, you're doing it. But I mean, uh, what we could look at is how you could be more on the same side. So, I mean, seven is good. I mean, you've gone above 6.5 and everything. So let's look at your fluency and coherence. So that's basically how natural you sound. I mean, I thought you sounded very natural indeed. And you know you were producing very good ideas, and the way you were addressing the questions, you were addressing the topics fluently. That's what it is: fluency and coherence. You had good, you, you expressed opinions very well, and you know how you were agreeing and disagreeing. Um, I thought it was really, you had you know a few uh, ums and ahs here and there, but you know that's all you can do. Maybe is use the tiny a few more linking words to that, just to you know avoid. Uh, that kind of stuff and you know a bit of self repetition uh, that you had in in part two i mean that was why I, I, I felt that's where you struggled just a little bit but yeah. you, you collect you know, i mean that you were very close you almost stopped at the end of your your in, it was going to you had 10 seconds left of your two minutes uh, so the important thing here is to definitely keep going which you eventually did you didn't stop you didn't give up you 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 kept going, and that's very important in the IELTS test. And uh, I would say, you know, definitely, you know, work on that. If if you're on part two and you know you're struggling a little bit to continue with your topic, go have a subtopic in your mind. Have have a, a an extra idea, even if it's off topic. I mean, it's it's even okay just to talk off topic, just as long as you you address the question, and you know, you tell you show the examiner that way that you understood it. So, like, say, thirty percent. You answer the question. If it was this was a this was a topic you could more or less talk about. Struggled a little bit at the end, but you know that's okay. You could just uh, you know go on to something else. Think, but well, to be honest with you, I'm not an expert on the environment. Uh, my topic is such and such and such. I I'm into art. You know, just you can you can make it up that way, and you know go on to something that you're more comfortable with. So, if, and if you went on to the just your subtopic for the last ten seconds. I think that's okay. I mean, you, you can, you can, if it's a topic that you really are not aware of, then you know you can just address the question, say uh, about you know you, you've asked me uh, what I think of uh, you know these environmental problems. I'm not an expert on the environment because I haven't studied geography or you know stuff like that, anything about ecology. I'm into this. I might this is my major. Blah 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 blah. And then you can again refer back to the topic, saying I think it's a terrible thing to you know to answer your question. It's it, it, it is a terrible thing to have environmental problems in this day and age. You know, just keep going and make yeah. sure you address the topic, even if you don't know it. Go off topic. That's fine. All right, that was. Uh, let's go to uh, you know lexical resource. You know vocabulary. Um, I thought you had a wide range of vocabulary, and I think you were using it very effectively, uh, which is very good. And you know the, these are. This is what I actually don't have any uh, problems with you. I think you can always obviously increase your vocabulary a little bit, but I don't think you've struggled with vocabulary or 
you were you were not looking for um, too many complicated words. You, you look uh, complicated. You, you did have a wide range of uh, vocabulary, and they were topic related. So you know, very good stuff there. I wouldn't go too much into your uh, um, vocabulary. If we're looking at grammar, I think you I think you were very good in that one too. I think this is your strongest point actually, which is usually most candidates' weakest. I would say your strongest. Point here is probably uh, Grammy had good connectives. You know the prepositions were good, and um, you know you addressed those very well, and you, you kept going, and you actually you didn't have trouble, you know, structuring your sentences. So you know I'd say maybe not. Don't focus too much on grammar. What I would say you would be focusing on is a little bit of pronunciation techniques. At some point, you know, when you were you were sort of talking about cats and cars. Sometimes I couldn't, you know, distinguish the one, you know, between the two. Very little, you know, very little mispronunciations here, you know. But if, if you're saying chat, make sure you're saying chat. If you're saying car, make sure you're saying car, um, even though they are you know, kind of similar. Um, here you, you, you said uh, allowed it, you know, instead of allowed. So, you know, that, that's a little error there. Um, uh, when we're talking about the, you're talking about the ice up in the Arctic, you said ice, sir. At one point, it's, it, it's ice, you know, big blocks of ice. You can say uh, glacier. Um, so, you know, just a few mispronunciations here. I would work just mostly on your on your pronunciation, just to make sure you're on the safe side um, when it comes to the uh, real test of IELTS speaking. Uh, so these are the things to just focus on pronunciation and also uh, part two, make sure you can, you know, keep going. For part two, you did you did collect yourself with part two, but you can make yourself even more comfortable by going off topic at some point. It doesn't matter because uh, you're allowed to do that in IELTS speaking techniques. Um, you will not get marked down. What you would get marked down for is stopping and not talking for the two minutes. It's very important that you can talk up to two minutes in part two. So it's, it's not too many things to work with there. It's just those little. Uh, do you have any questions for me? Um, no, is that is that just I uh, I'm afraid of the anxiety that I get because I am an person and that maybe I won't perform as well as if I had a conversation the same conversation with my friends, for example. Yeah, right. So you have to, to think. Remember the exam. It's just. It's just, just a little test and it doesn't last long. You just, how long was that? It was, it was a one hour, more or less, the, the whole speaking test. And, you know, uh, I think even in part, part three, it's actually, I would say, is the most difficult part of uh, the IELTS speaking test, part two and part three. Uh, part one is more like a warm up. So, you know, the, the thing that definitely needs kind of to focus on is part two and part three. So, especially part three is that uh, you're, you're just having a conversation with somebody. The examiner is having a conversation. It, that, that's what it's like. It's, it's more like that rather than an interview, even though part one is more like the interview uh, part one. Uh, oh, another thing I wanted to mention with part one, try to extend your answers a little bit. Make sure that they, you know, they're not too, uh, not too short. Extend them a little bit. Even though they are very simple, short questions, uh, just make sure you, know, you elaborate a little bit more on uh, you know, what you're saying in your answers. Part one, and you should be fine with the stress levels. Um, if you're in, the best thing to do is warm up beforehand, uh, listen to maybe a podcast or two. So you're thinking, you know, more strongly, you're more comfortable speaking in English, and you know, uh, you were doing that anyway. But you're, you're speaking more or less assertively to speak even more assertively. Uh, speak, you know, just be louder, uh, sit up, you know, straight and everything, and you know, because. You've got a good command of English, and it's just a, t a few techniques you need to work on. There is nothing to be stressed about. Don't worry about things like that. Okay, thank you. Make sure you get some sleep beforehand, and you know, just take a deep breath, and you go in there. You're going to have a conversation with someone for up to 15, 16 minutes maximum, and that's it. It's over. So you know, don't worry yourself too much about this, and speak, speak loud, speak assertively. See that because we it's during stress levels. Because uh, I do, you know, I, I do presentations. I go in front of the television. Uh, obviously, it was very stressful at the beginning. So, um, speaking loudly, this is what we were taught. Speaking loud uh, helps reduce the stress level. It really does help. It does miracles. 
So you can, you, you just have an assertive voice. You can make it just a tiny bit louder just to make sure you keep those stress levels down and you should be fine. Um, I mean, have you got your test booked by any chance lately? Do you, yeah. Do you have? It's in a week. Oh, it's in a week. Well, wow. <laughs> good luck with that. I mean, I don't know if you're going to have uh, time um, in your schedule. I mean, you could, do, you could do one more test with us. But, uh, I mean, if you don't have time uh, to do one more mock test, just you know, take those points, as I told you, so you can be safe, because you, you already are above the 6.5, in my opinion. You're just about a 7, uh, which I said, but you can make that a, a very strong 7 in this one week, and you can even make it 7.5. Okay, thank you. That's my pleasure.